Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're still in the middle of uh, discussing uh, mathematics as a language to formulate its uh, theories as one uh, fundamental characteristics that distinguishes modern science from earlier uh, sciences. Um, although we've enlisted, uh, we've uh, enumerated uh, like six uh, fundamental characteristics and uh, it, it's possible to discuss them separately but as a matter of fact they are all interconnected yeah? so now um, we've we've talked about uh, some in some detail uh, on why uh, mathematics was regarded very highly by Galileo what, 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 uh, what is there in mathematics that 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 to the mind of Galileo could be considered as constituting a language and that this language is the language that can that that could uh, explain and capture the reality of uh, natural phenomena now recall in the uh, in the debate uh, between Galileo and the Catholic Church one of the the arguments put forth by uh, Galileo is in contradistinction to Aristotle's uh, theory of gravity because in arguing whether or not the, the, the earth or the sun is at the center of the universe uh, he has to explain uh, why don't objects fall down to the sun or if, if the sun is indeed in the center of the universe and indeed the moon uh, the earth the planets they all constitute the same material uh, entity meaning that there's no there's no longer distinction between what's heavenly and what's earthly then then how do we make sense that, pe that things fall down to earth uh, and why don't things fall down to the sun and so on and so forth meaning there's a vacuum there there's, there's a gap so at least uh, on the part of Aristotle, yeah, at least on the part of the, so actually we're going to jump to the second, to the second characteristics, uh, materialism, materialistic, empirical, and sense data. It has to be that, that one of fundamental characteristics of modern science that it's materialistic, empirical. These are all more or less the same. It's uh, the, the difference is very small. Uh, sense data, sense meaning our senses: uh, sight, hearing, touch, s uh, s smell, and taste. Sensory data, based. Right? So, recall that in uh, the Aristotelian system, so you have the Earth and you have the moon so everything else beyond from from the moon onwards from the moon beyond these are all these are all heavenly heavenly everything within the atmosphere of the earth is earthly so earthly constitutes uh, earthly materials are constituted of earth fire water and air uh, heavenly material heavenly objects are constitute uh, 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 consist of um, the fifth element their, their constitution is not of the earth their constitution is of the heavens uh, they are permanent they are unchanging they are perfect now why do objects fall down to the earth because they are earthly only earthly objects will fall down to the earth. All these are earthly objects. The moon will not fall down to the earth because the moon is heavenly. Planet Venus is heavenly. The sun is heavenly. All the, the heavenly objects would remain in the heavens because that is its natural position, its natural place. It belongs there. It has no reason why it has to fall down to earth. Whereas other objects, it is consists of combinations of earthly materials, meaning earth, fire, water, and air. 
Okay, so that is the reason why objects fall to the ground. So this is Aristotelian. Uh, Aristotelian. We've discussed this before. Aristotelian uh, theory of gravity. Okay. So, so wh what does it say? Uh, earthly objects. fall to the earth to the center to the center meaning earth center of the earth because that is its a natural place a natural position place so everything would revert back to its natural position or natural place unless you force them uh, so, so meaning uh, naturally things will gravitate towards the center but if we exert some force then we can like move them away from the center from the earth but then if we stop the force if we stop exerting the force then the the object will fall down to the, its to its natural position or place again. So this is basically Aristotelian theory theory of gravity. So Galileo challenged this. So Galileo challenged this. So how did he challenge? He conducted an ex experiment. So recall that we the, the slanted, yeah, the slanted. Uh, this the, the slanted uh, slide where he dropped or just let uh, cannonballs just roll down like this so then so different 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 uh, different masses would still fall or roll at the same rate okay so we've we've mentioned before one aspect of this experiment is that it favors a more precise measurement meaning well aristotle also depended on observation I mean, it's not that uh, the ancient philosophers they they seem they they, you know, they, 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 they do away with uh, empirical material observation they also observe natural phenomena but they don't observe to, uh, at least uh, for, for Aristotle, he, he, he didn't, his framework does not require them to observe it, to observe the natural phenomena specifically, um, meaning they observe it in, in general, but things generally they fall down to earth and the reason why it falls down because it's earthly, it belongs here. Whereas Galileo, okay, uh, suppose that that is the case, meaning the, the more earthly material an object contains the you know the the greater the tendency uh, for it to fall back to to the earth so now let's check this fact let's uh, put different objects with different amount of earthly material so to speak so the amount of earthly material the amount of material the amount of matter within an object is the mass so let's let other aspects constant be, be constant the shape is constant when they are cannonballs when they the shape is the same uh, let the condition be the same so don't don't just imagine that an, an elephant and an ant fall down in some way or leaf put you know, set the, the experiment in such a way that everything else is uh, equal except the mess so now we just let cannonballs of different mass roll down the slide. Had Aristotle be true, if Aristotle, if Aristotle is true, if, if Aristotle's uh, theory of gravity is true, the, the, the greater the mass, the, the faster or the, the higher the rate of descent, the, the, the quicker the, the, the cannonball will roll given equal distance. Okay. So these are this is the the mathematical uh, aspect. Meaning you, you want a precise measurement, but at the same time, to 
to observe this, to, to actually check this claim, is also in favor in favor of things that are empirical in nature. Meaning, you can you can sense this. We, we can detect this uh, through our sense, through our own direct observation. So, from the point of view of Galileo, so this is a metaphysical claim. Metaphysical claim. Meaning, you can't you can't really check this. You can't verify this. You can't. This, it, it does not give you a condition where we can have a sense data that you know that that tells you if this st statement is true. I mean, it does it does not give you uh, anything for you to check with. It's either you accept it or you don't. Now, Galileo, uh, in conducting this experiment, he is converting this metaphysical claim into things of empirical in nature okay so that is a, another aspect another dimension of uh, what what uh, what constitutes uh, modern science as opposed to what ancient uh, the earlier natural philosophy Now, see, since Galileo challenged Aristotelian theory of gravity, now uh, his uh, the the result of his experiment, the conclusion of this uh, experiment is that Aristotle is false. Eh? Aristotle's Aristotle's theory or claim claim does not hold eh? does not hold however what is the alternative eh? what is the alternative what is the alternative uh, we uh, the church would ask Galileo okay, okay at, at least Aristotle had uh, had uh, uh, provided an explanation why things fall down to earth now if we reject this if we do away with this explanation how do we explain that things fall down to the earth meaning you if you want to uh, do away with one particular theory on gravity then you need to replace it with a better one uh, so in this uh, in, in this matter galileo did not manage to provide an alternative theory of gravitation until the time of isaac newton so we've uh, and we've uh, talked about this eh? uh, in 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 some of its aspects, but we're going to explore some other aspects of Newton's theory of gravity. So after Galileo, the the the, the thrust of scientific research, eh? the thrust of uh, investigation upon natural phenomena, is more or less set uh, in a certain way. And culminated in uh, in Isaac Newton lah, because Isaac Isaac Newton he fully embraced the Galilean way, the Galilean path, uh, meaning his his uh, his investigations of natural phenomena followed closely what what Galileo has said uh, almost a uh, hundred years uh, before. So uh, now we've uh, talked about the 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 mathematical aspect meaning uh, Newton uh, Newton discovered that the equations that governs the f the fall of the apple so this is apple so the apple will fall down to the earth is the same with the mathematical formulations that govern the trajectory of the moon this is the moon yeah. the the mathematical theory is the same mathematical theory mathematical theory or formulation so 
that them because the the same equation governs this the, 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 the governs both phenomena that therefore the both phenomena must be exactly the same phenomena so how do we explain this then how do we explain this uh, physically how do we do we make sense of this so imagine and and uh, and it, it's 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 a whole package it's not just the theory of gravitation it's the theory of motion so it's it's a rep- so newton managed to did uh, to 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 co- accomplish what galileo did not uh, galileo criticized aristotle but he failed to provide a, an alternative so newton managed to come up with a whole new uh system explanatory system that explains why things are the way uh, the way they are yeah. and it totally replace uh, aristotle uh, meaning the aristotelian system yeah. so, uh, so say uh, say uh, for, for for example one of uh, uh, so to aristotle things would would be it in its natural place but we when we exert a force then it can move away from the plate from the place but if we stop exerting that force and it will fall back to its natural place whereas the newtonian way of explaining movements and force is that there's no such thing as a natural place things things can be anywhere you know uh, there's space and time and there are objects in space and time and these objects can be anywhere it could be could be anywhere it's possible for it to be here or there if the object is stationary it's, it's, it's not moving then it will stay stationary unless force is exerted upon this object now if a force is exerted upon this object and then it will move if it moves at a constant velocity meaning it moves in a in a steady state eh? it just moves at the same speed in the same direction then that object will continue to move in the same direction and the same speed forever and ever unless there's another force is being exerted uh, upon that object to stop it or to, or to change its direction or to slow it down so it's a slightly different idea it's, it's not a slightly different idea it's a totally different idea it does away with natural place natural position now now everything is just uh is just space so everything is just space uh, sp- uh, like a 3d say you can, you can imagine everything is just space a 3d space a x y z so this newton got, got from descartes and one dimension time so every everything is an object yeah, or co- a collection of object yeah, like this yeah. and then moving in time yeah. now if it if the object is stationary it will remain stationary unless a, a force is being is exerted if the object is moving at a constant velocity, it will continue to move at a constant velocity unless there's another force that stops it or slows it, slows it down ch- or changes its direction. Uh, so, imagine if we if this is the Earth, and, and there's a person, and suppose this person is very strong, and he could throw a ball with sufficient force with sufficient uh, with with enough force such that the ball uh, will throw the ball and the ball would move in this direction okay so remember if the ball is is moving in this direction at a constant velocity then it will continue to move in this direction at a constant velocity unless there's another force that exerts itself on the ball that make that makes it stop or makes it change direction so and the force is the force of gravity and the force of gravity there's a force of gravity here that attracts everything towards the earth 
If the force of gravity is strong enough, then the ball will fall down to earth. Or if now if the force of gravity is not strong enough, or the the or the force exerted upon the ball by the person is so strong that it is it is enough for it to es escape gravitational field, then the ball will would escape the earth right? like that. so if the force is strong the, the gravitational force is stronger then it will fall down to the earth if it is not strong enough and the, the force exerted to the ball is, is greater then the, the ball would move away from the earth but if it is just nice it's not too strong not too weak then the ball would want to move in a straight line but but the, the gravitational field of the earth would attract it to fall down but then it is not enough for it to fall down so it is constantly attracting 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 therefore the ball would form an orbit around the earth so this is exactly what uh, this is the, the this is how we explain the phenomena of the moon orbiting the earth the earth orbiting the sun uh, other planets, moons, other moons orbiting other planets, and other planets orbiting the sun. So it's it's from a combination of Newton's gravitation universal theory of gravity, which says that any two objects there's a um, attraction, there's a force, a gravitational force, there's a gravitational force between them, and then. Newton's laws of motion. Newton's laws of motion. There are three. One, two, three. Uh, and, and one of them says that an object that is stationary will remain stationary, or an object is, that is moving at a constant velocity will continue to move at a constant velocity unless. Uh, that there exist other forces that 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 that, uh, that exerts itself on the object, and hence uh, New uh, Newton's system explains away the movements of the the trajectories of the planets and all the heavenly objects. So it settles uh, that all the, the the heavenly objects they are not heavenly objects they are they are objects just as other objects that we can find on Earth. Uh, they, they may constitute the same material and this, the material is no longer uh, earth, air, fire and, and water the material could be carbon, could be hydrogen, could be uh, oxygen, could be other uh, materials huh? because everything is consists of uh, chemical compounds yes okay so this is uh, so the, the modern science would mo uh, moves from metaphysical claims to empirical claims and uh, physical claims Metaphysical claims are simply not is not entertained, but there's a caveat to this. So it's uh, the, the 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 it's not that uh, modern science do away with metaphysics. It's just that modern science buried its metaphysics underneath. So the the metaphysics. So where is the metaphysics? The metaphysics is the assumption or the claim that. Uh, natural phenomena follows mathematical rules, so that is the the metaphysics. Uh, so anything that is not mathematical, that is not explainable through mathematics, is not knowable. It's not it's not scientific. So it's the meta metaphysical claim is more subtle. It's not as uh, okay. We can say crude. It's it's not good to say this, but uh, when 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 uh, compared to Aristotle. The, the metaphysics of Newton is more subtle, whereas metaphysics of Aristotle is quite simple. I mean, every, everything from moon upwards or outwards are metaphysical objects or heavenly objects. Everything that is below that is physical objects. So, uh, he, you know, he, 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 the books of Aristotle would be divided a, according to those the classifications. So there's a book on metaphysics uh, talking about all this. There's a book on the silo about the heavens. There's a book on physics or physics about things on the earth, and there's, there's a book on uh, material uh, on on uh, on on uh, you know 
like that chemical compounds in on on the earth and so on and so forth like zoology and others okay so uh, so this uh, so, so this is what we mean by materialistic meaning uh, it suppresses metaphysical claims to focus on the material claims the material uh, materiality of things things that has a sense perception that 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 uh that 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 is detectable through our sense perception and since it's detectable through our sense perception it's measurable since it's measurable it can be put into mathematical formulation okay now the third the logical systematic rational okay now the third aspect okay, the third aspect being logical systematic and rational logical systematic rational so in this respect uh, modern science is not that different from aristotle and and then then uh, then the 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 old sciences that is based on aristotelian uh, philosophy here modern science is not that different compared to quote unquote sciences based on ancient philosophy philosophy or aristotle ancient or classical okay. so one of the contributions of aristotle is in in his uh, logical theory so aristotle is very well known to produce treatises or books or works on logical theory on on logic eh? on logic let's just say logic eh? logic so a lot of uh, theory of logic that we use today is pretty much based on aristotle it's, it's, there there are differences but uh, essentially they are the same it's just the way it's explained the way it's organized the way it is being taught the way it's being formulated is di- slightly different but essentially they refer to one same thing and one of the 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 law uh, logical rule one of the logical rule logical principle eh? one of the one of the logical principle is the law of non contradiction eh? it's called the law of non contradiction or sometimes it's also known as the law of excluded middle okay what does this law says that two things cannot be two things that are opposite that are contradictory cannot be at the same time true at the same time false either one must be true or any claim so any claim any proposition or statement can be either true or false not both nor neither okay it's quite a binary thing so if if we have two cont- uh, two very different theory of uh, two very different uh, theory of gravity uh, one that says that everything has has a natural position and the other one that says that there, there exists no natural position okay then these two theories or these two systems cannot be both true at the same time it cannot be both true 
So it's either one of them true or both are false. And both false and it's okay. Because perhaps there's another theory that is, that is more true. Eh? That is true. But two contradictory statements cannot be both true. So that is the law of non-contradiction. There is also the law of excluded middle. So you cannot say that this is somewhat true but this what is somewhat false. No, it's either true or it's, it is false. So this is uh, ex uh, uh, the, the, one of the logical principles that that is quite that is universally ap uh, applied throughout uh, the investigation, the scientific investigations. Meaning, it you, you we will not allow. I mean, they will not allow two th two contradictory th two contradictory theories eh? that goes against another theory. Eh? So this is not allowed. No? Contradictory. If there's if there exists two contradictory theories, both scientific, that means one of them must be true, or might, one of them must be favorable over the other you, you can't say that okay let's just say both are true although both are saying the opposite things so this uh, this aspect is uh, uh, part of the, the logical system behind the organization of modern science uh, next now determinism okay being deterministic so this is uh, peculiar to no Newtonian system eh? okay this cause and effect or deterministic eh? and also somewhat reduction is but I'm not going to write it here uh, causal relations, deterministic. Uh, so this is particularly evident in Newtonian system. This is particularly, particularly evident in Newtonian physics. Okay, so basically. Uh, in Newton's universe, there's space and there's, there's time. We can't see time, but we're moving like, through time. So there's space and there's time. There are objects moving around within space and time. So meaning if we can account for all particles or all objects in the entire universe and we know exactly its mass and its velocity. So its mass and its velocity its mass its velocity its mass its velocity or more accurately so physicists would laugh at me so instead of mass and velocity it's energy 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 and momentum energy momentum but this is a bit uh, to to non physics students. This might sound uh, a little bit far fetched. How? <laughs> well, we can't see energy, and what is what the hell is momentum? Uh, but we can just reduce it to mass and velocity, because uh, momentum already contains mass and velocity, and energy so the the rest of of, of that. Okay, uh, basically mass the amount of matter uh, within this object, and then the velocity. Uh, it's not the now mass is not amount of matter. Mass now is the, the measurement of matter, meaning uh, a part, one particle would have a certain mass. Uh, so mass here is not a quantity of matter. It's just it's not like you can count the matter that that is that constitutes the particle. Uh, mass now uh, means that how much force or energy is required to exert this particular particle to move at a certain speed or certain velocity. So that is what mass means now. Because now we're, we're talking at a very fundamental level. So mass and its velocity. So this uh, this one object here 
and then it's moving here at, at, at this particular velocity and there's another object here with particular mass and it's moving at the particular velocity there's a particular mass moving at a particular velocity particular mass moving at a particular velocity and so on and so forth if we know all the all the particles in the universe its mass its respective mass and velocity then we will we can account for all its movements precise movements and then things would just you know every movement would lead to another movement so if there's a, a like a collision uh, then then things will follow it's like a billet ball but it's a very complex uh, you know table of pool where things are just uh, but then it's like a, it's like the entire universe is like um, like a movie <laughs> like now i'm recording this uh, session so once i've recorded this session so i can save it and i can play it so the entire universe is just like a movie it has a, you can play it you can move forward in time you can move backwards in time it will always be the same because the the the, the every cost would determine the, the effect and the effect is determined by a particular cost the only problem is that we do not have complete knowledge of all the positions of uh, these particles, its mass, its respective mass, and its velocity. We don't have that knowledge. It's too much. It's it, it's all. It's infinite. We, we it's impossible for us to account for all of them. So as as uh, as uh, suggested by another scientist, another philosopher, Laplace, he said, uh, if if we, we if we know all this then we can predict all the past the present and the future yeah, with precision so this is the world view that results from newtonian physics yeah, so this is the world view that results from newtonian physics it's very it's a dis deterministic world view so it's a kind of fatalist world view when the, everything is set you know whatever you're going to think whatever you're, you're going to do it's all preset there's no there's almost no such thing as free will free will is an illusion it's just uh, something that, it, that 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 emerges out of this complex system and suddenly we feel as if we 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 have choice but as a matter of fact everything is already predetermined by newtonian's laws of motion So that is what we mean by uh, de 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 uh, deterministic. Yeah? And then it claims universality. Uh, the, the, universe, the universality of modern science has to do with its mathematical nature because, uh, well, upon scrutiny, you can argue this, but just from just from the from the outset the the from 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 the surface you know two plus two is four it doesn't matter whether you are in malaysia or bangladesh or china or india or uk two plus two is four <laughs> it's universally true so if you base the the entire science on on mathematics as its language then it's bound to be Univer the the universe universal aspect of mathematics would would creep into uh, the the sciences and thus turn it into a universal thing altogether so meaning in in the previous uh, in the past you have like uh, different sets of different world views or different sort of paradigms of doing science the, the chinese would have a certain way of viewing the the universe the world and in, in such a way that it produces a particular kind of rational investigation of nature the europeans another way the muslims another way the indians another way depending on the the, the entire worldview the entire metaphysics but once you, you've reduced investigation to only this it has to be mathematical it has to be sensory data it has to be this it has to be that then and 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 the fact that it's very effective and it's very uh, you know uh, it's very successful, meaning more and more discoveries were made at rapid at a rapid pace, 
and ev- ev- everybody would seek to emulate this way it becomes universal it becomes somewhat universal and finally uh, the the theory of change the theory of change no so let's let's not go into that eh? it's a it's a it, it's quite involved eh? meaning if you go if we move back to the time of uh, the ancient uh, philosophers in uh, during the time of the greeks and remember we mentioned a few names eh? the pre-socratic philosophers one of them is parmenides and the other one is heraclitus um so parmenides he say he say was saying that uh, Although apparently we th- we see we see changes happening around us, but in reality they are the same. It's a manifestation of the same reality. On the other hand, Heraclitus was saying that nothing is permanent. Everything is uh, in constant flux. We can ent- every existence is like a river. Right? We 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 can we can put ourselves in a river. But at every moment, it's a different river. It's not the same river. So everything in the states of in state of flux, in state of change. So because here there's a slightly it's kind of contradictory. I mean, at, on on the one hand, it's it's deterministic. On the other hand, they believe in this uh, spirit of change, wanting to change things, you know, to push boundaries, to push our limits. That we need to change things, uh, the established theory of Aristotle change it and make it better. So that is the 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 driving force of scientific discover scientific discovery in 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 a, in a sense of modern science. So let's just keep it at that. And if we there there are more details to that, but let's just uh, keep it at that. We'll we'll come back to this uh, when uh, when when it's appropriate. Okay, now back to uh, the theory of gravity because we're we're, we're moving towards uh, Albert Einstein here. So now, New- New- Isaac Newton has a very nice theory of motion and gravity that explains the trajectory of objects, and the same theory also explains the trajectory of moon, and the planets, and other uh, astronomical objects as well. So the, the 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 system of explanation is the, uh, is the, the the Newton's law of motion, uh, and uh, Newton's universal theory of gravitation. Now, U- Newton's universal theory of gravitation states that in any two objects, whenever you have two objects, there will there is a gravitational force between the two objects so if i take this pen and this notebook as a matter of fact there's a gravitational force between this pen and this uh, notebook we can't feel it because it's very weak uh, remember the, the the equation here so this is this is the equation of the the gravitational Newton's theory of gravitation uh, this one so the, the force we can calculate the force given the mass of the pen the first mass and the mass of the notebook divided by the distance between these two objects squared but the, the force would be f- so small because the mass is not big and also the gravitational constant is small so for us to feel the effect of the gravitational force, we need the mass to be extremely high, as high as the Earth. So if we have an object as massive as the Earth, then we then we can sort of experience uh, a, f- a force that is attracting us towards the Earth. So the f- the force that we feel, uh, this gravitational force that we can experience now that we feel that when we drop this object and there's a force exerting on the pen it came from the earth it's not the came from it's just that there's force between the pen and the earth although the pen 
the pen's mass is very low, the mass of the earth is very high. And because of that, that's, we can see and we can feel the force. Okay, now this explanation is a good, it can serve as an alternative to Aristotle's explanation, but it falls short on one aspect. At least, uh, Aristotle had an explanation of why things fall down, because Aristotle says there's a natural place, things wants to go back to its natural place. Suppose we ask the same question to, to Newton, why must there be an attraction between any two objects? Why must there be? Newton just said that there is, and we can measure its effects. But what causes that? At least Aristotle said it is because of a natural place. When there exists a natural place, things tend to go back to its natural place. Now, Newton, you've done you've you've done away with natural place. You said there's there's no such thing as natural place, but now you're claiming that between two objects, any two objects, there's always this force, gravitational force, or force that attracts the objects to come together. What? Why is that? Why do you make that claim? Well, sure, you can measure, but why? But you measure the effects, but why must there be a force or attractive force in the first place? That Newton did not manage to answer. Meaning, so there's still, there's still, um, although, although the Newton's theory of gravitation is enough to replace Aristotle's theory of gravitation, but there's still a shortcoming. So this shortcoming later on was uh, was resolved by Albert Einstein. So we have like uh, number five and number six, but we'll skip this. So now we move to Albert Einstein's Einstein's theory of gravitation. But in order for us to understand this, we need to understand first Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. Which has two parts, and special theory of relativity and general. The general theory of re re relativity provides the explanation for of why two objects two objects with mass would have a, a force between them that attracts them towards one another so i i keep on postponing this because last lecture i said that in this lecture we will we'll, we'll talk about this but now i'm saying that let's stop here and we'll talk about this in the next session so inshallah so until next time, Assalamualaikum.